Armando Hasudin and Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasudin. In this video, we're going to look at red blood cells, an overview of red blood cells, as well as hemoglobin. So we know that red blood cells are important in transporting oxygen all around our body. So we begin uh, with the circulatory system. So here we have the heart and the lungs, uh, circulation going to the lungs, and then we have circulation going to and from um, the heart to tissues. So the red blood cells, they are produced by bone marrow, by stem cells within the bone marrow, hemopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. The production of red blood cells is known as erythropoiesis. So erythropoiesis is the production of red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. Once produced, uh, the, red, the red blood cells will mature within circulation. Red blood cells' main function is to transport oxygen around our body. However, these red blood cells that are new or that are just leaving tissues back to the heart do not have that much oxygen. The blood vessels leaving the tissues leave as venules and then veins and then enter the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava. The, the, blood, the blood here leaving the tissues are deoxygenated. So they're deoxygenated blood because they do not contain that much oxygen. Then the heart will pump this deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary artery into the lungs where the lungs will reoxygenate this blood supply. So carbon dioxide is exhaled and then oxygen is inhaled and then oxygen can then bind onto these red blood cells here. And so these red blood cells with bound oxygen will then go back to the heart via the pulmonary vein. This blood now is oxygenated. The heart will then pump this oxygenated blood to tissues. And the tissues will then use the oxygen here um, and then will uh, give off carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And then the cycle continues. The heart will pump out the oxygenated blood first through the aorta, then the aorta will form arteries and then arterioles and then capillaries of the tissue. So as I mentioned, the main function of red blood cells is to transport oxygen around our body and to deliver it to tissues. So if we were to zoom into this red blood cell here that contains no oxygen first, we can see its shape. Its shape looks like this from the top. It is about 7.5 micrometers in diameter. If we look at it from a different angle, from a side view, we can see that it is 2.5 micrometers in height. It's, so if we were to describe a red blood cell, we would describe it as small, biconcave. It contains no nucleus actually when it's mature and few organelles. But it contains many, many, many hemoglobin molecules. And it's, it, it is these hemoglobin molecules that are responsible for carrying the oxygen. So now let's zoom into this red blood cell here that contains um, bound oxygen. So here we can see that the red blood cell contains many oxygen gas after the blood supply has been reoxygenated by the lung. So this erythrocyte, this red blood cell, is saturated with oxygen. So how is it that these red blood cells can be saturated in oxygen? How is it that oxygen is able to bind onto hemoglobin molecules within red blood cells? To find out, let's zoom into this red blood cell here, which is saturated in oxygen. If we zoom into this small area here, we can look, we can find these um, many, many tiny molecules here. And it's these tiny molecules that are hemoglobin. Each one of these are hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made up of the protein globin bound to a red heme pigment. Now it's very interesting to know that one red blood cell, one erythrocyte contains 
millions of hemoglobins. And so you can imagine the potential of how many oxygens this red blood cell can carry. So let's look at hemoglobin a bit further. Let's zoom into this hemoglobin here. This is one hemoglobin. So here in red, I'm drawing the red heme uh, group. And there is four. And here I'm drawing the four globin chains. The four globin chains are made up of two beta chains and two alpha chains. And these four red things, as I mentioned, are the heme groups. So this makes up one hemoglobin. And again, hemoglobin is made up of four heme groups and four globin chains. So where does oxygen bind to in hemoglobin? Well, let's zoom into this heme group and find out. The heme group's st chemical structure looks something like this. So this is the heme group that makes up hemoglobin. And here in the center, we have iron. Iron is a metal, and it's very important that we have iron so that iron can carry oxygen for us. Oxygen, when oxygen binds to iron of the heme, the hemoglobin molecule, the whole molecule, will be known as oxyhemoglobin. But when oxygen detaches from the iron of the heme, it is known as deoxyhemoglobin because it doesn't have um, oxygen. So an example of deoxyhemoglobin is when we have oxygen here detaching from the iron. Now, what helps detach oxygen from the iron is... Um, the principle of partial pressure, but also the, the, with the help of a uh, chemical known as 2,3-diphosphoglycerate or bisphosphoglycerate, which plays an important role in oxygen detachment from iron of the hemoglobin. So to simplify it, 2,3-DPG plays a role in oxygen affinity for iron. And as I mentioned, oxygen's transport the main, is the main function of erythrocytes. Uh, but carbon dioxide can also bind onto uh, this hemoglobin of red blood cells and, and can be transported this way. When carbon dioxide binds to hemoglobin of a red blood cell, um, this molecule will be known as carboaminohemoglobin. So for example, when this carbon dioxide binds onto the iron or the, or the hemoglobin molecule here of it, this whole hemoglobin structure will then be called carboaminohemoglobin. Now, there are some disorders that can arise when there's problems with the hemoglobin molecules or the red blood cells itself. Common erythrocyte disorders include anemia. We can have few, few types of anemia. For example, we can have hemorrhagic anemia when we just lose blood. So therefore, if we lose blood, we lose the amount of red blood cells in our body and so we become anemic. We can also have a sec another type of anemia where we have a decrease in hem hemoglobin content. An example of this is when we don't have enough iron in our body and so we cannot produce proper hemoglobin molecules. Another one is when we have just abnormal hemoglobin altogether. When we have abnormal hemoglobin, there's something wrong with the synthesis or the genetics of it. An example of abnormal hemoglobin production is in thalassemia as well as sickle cell anemia. I hope you enjoyed this video on red blood cells and hemoglobin. Next, hopefully I'll make an, another video uh, that continues from this that looks much deeper into um, the hemoglobin and its structure and function. Thank you.